Welcome to another episode of Brooklyn Bound. I am Felipe. Today we are at 285 Kent with Rick and Leaf. Thank you for being here, guys. So, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. This uh, location was actually selected by Leaf. Um, can you talk about that? Why, why a little bit? You guys asked me to choose one of my favorite spots in Brooklyn, um, some place that I frequent, and this is actually one of the few places I do frequent in Brooklyn. Um, I'm a Manhattanite myself, but uh, I do venture out on that long train ride to, from the Upper West Side to come to 285 parties, um, particularly like top eight parties. A lot of my friends play here all the time. At least once or every other week, I have a good friend that's like, or a musician I'm really into that's playing some party here. So I have a lot of reason to come here. Rick, could you give us a little bit of history about the space or you know, how, how long you've been here maybe? Yeah, um, I've been involved for the past year or so. Um, the space has gone through a lot of changes over the years. Um, initially, it was a, I think it was a warehouse that was an extension of Domino Sugar Factory, um, and later on, it became a uh, sort of DIY art space called Paris, London, West Nile, um, and eventually, it kind of just uh, transferred ownership, became 285 Kent. Now, do you guys have uh, any particular focus as far as like the acts you like to bring in here? Or? Yeah, um, we try to. Well, we try as best we can to switch it up. We like to do noise shows. We like to do raves. We like to do hardcore shows. We kind of like to bring the best of everything going on under one roof because we're the biggest. Uh, we're the biggest DIY venue around. So. You know, a lot of times when there's really larger touring bands that have come through that we had when they were at other venues when they're real small, they come back here and play, you know, when they have their Manhattan show, they come here when they play in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. As far as performing is concerned, um, I got to see you rock at uh, the Converse space, yeah. um, which was really cool and it seemed like there was a lot involved. So I was just curious as to like how often do you, um, you know, switch up your presentation? That was the first time I got to work with dancers. That was the first performance we ever did together. Really? Yeah, I want to incorporate more of that into my music performances. I, had, I was a dance major in college, so like that's entirely the world where like my dances were, you know, it'd be like site specific, people performing with props, like pushing cars, playing with lights and stuff like that. Um, so I want to do more of that with my like rap shows. I'd actually be remiss if I didn't mention this awesome shirt that you have on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom found it. Uh, apparently I had a bag of things I was going to throw away from childhood a few years ago and she took it out and she found it in her closet this week and I stole it back. Nice. <laughs> I think it's polyester though, so. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't have to share that. 